and is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Madam Speaker. So what's it going to take to get people in this country on both sides of the aisle to understand that the Biden border crisis is killing people? Lake and Riley, 22-year-old nursing student, life taken by an illegal immigrant, not a migrant. I hear this word migrant used all the time. This is a misnomer trying to brush it under the rug. These aren't migrants, illegal immigrant invasion of this country. Earlier this week, another two-year-old boy, two boy in Maryland murdered by an illegal immigrant, not a migrant. So President Biden is down there in Texas pretending to do something about the border now in Brownsville. Not the problem area like Eagle Pass, but a quieter area currently. And so he's yelling at Republicans say, well, you're not doing anything about the border. Well, he's, the first day he reversed all of President Trump's policies that were helping keep the border in check like all these eight things items on this list. He could do by executive action. He could sign a pen and do a legal constitutional executive action immediately. Instead, he wants to blame Republicans or somebody else for the policies he invoked on day one that have put us where we are. So instead, he wants to sue the t state of Texas because they see their state as being invaded and they have laws in, at the state level to stop invasions. He's suing them to get rid of their razor wire measures along the border. What a joke. I yield back. The gentlelady, it's important to note, voted against the FRA last year because, specifically noted in the gentlelady's press release, the side deals that are being put in place in this exercise that we're going to be putting forward next week in appropriations bills, those side deals were not in the law that the gentlelady just referred to. To be very clear, everyone's going to go around talking about following the deal that was cut last year under the FRA that we're spending at a certain level. The fact is another $70 billion was added in side deals, and that's why the gentlelady opposed the FRA last year. But those side deals are a part of this agreement that is plussing up and funding the bureaucracy that is at war with the American people. That is the truth. That is the truth no matter how much people want to gloss over it on either side of the aisle, but particularly this side of the aisle. Because this side of the aisle wants to be able to campaign on border security. And you know what? The border's not secure. And we're going to be passing a continuing resolution that continues to fund a DHS that refuses to secure the border. These Americans are dead. These Americans are dead because illegal immigrants, illegal aliens were released into the United States by this administration. Lake and Riley, one week ago today, was alive and well, and now she's gone because somebody from Venezuela was released on mass parole in El Paso, went into the United States, went to New York, was released after assaulting somebody, moved to Athens, Georgia, and killed this young woman because of the policies of the radical progressive Democrats that my colleagues on this side of the aisle want to campaign against but refuse to use the power of the purse to stop. James Madison gave us the power of the purse, and we should darn well use it. With that, I'm going to yield... Uh, up to three minutes to the gentleman from Arizona. The gentleman from Arizona is recognized. I thank the gentleman. And he's exactly right. What is the legislative branch's remedy to an executive branch that refuses to follow the law? It is to remove spending. I introduced legislation. I introduced legislation that said we'll fund I CBP. We're going to fund TSA. We're going to fund uh, air traffic controllers and uh, our military personnel. And you know what? We're not going to fund anything else except for mandatories until this administration actually enforces the border. But we can't do that because there's this fear of a shutdown. You explain that to the American people. You explain that to the American people in my community. You go down there and take a look at the National Forest where there's now a squatter's camp set up filled with people for, for, uh, who are flowing across our border. So our, so our leader, who said in November, we're not going to do any more short-term CRs, we had it with him. This is the third one. And you know what happens? We just keep spending money. And we keep the policies that are in place. And that means the border remains open. This country remains in danger because of this administration. But not just this administration but because this body does not use what the founders gave us as the ultimate tool, and that is the purse strings. It's, it, it is really shameful. Um, with that, Mr. Chairman, you'll back.
Gentleman from Arizona Reserve. yields back. Gentleman from Texas reserves. The gentlelady from Texas is recognized. I thank the Speaker. I would note that the uh, gentleman, for whom I have a great deal of respect, uh, was just using a lot of the arguments that I've heard over and over again. And it's something that we've come to understand in this town is what we call the glossary. It's like when you, when you run out of the sort of, you know, what are we actually going to fight over substantively, we just bring out all the terms, right? We talk about, oh, oh, we only have a slim majority. Well, I will remind my colleagues on this side of the aisle, the Democrats had a slim majority when they've jammed through numerous massive bills, whether it's Obamacare, whether we're talking about the Inflation Reduction Act. Yet here we sit and we're walking away from the majority that we are given to use that majority, to use the power of the purse, to stop an executive branch that is out of control. A continuing resolution will continue to fund Biden's border war on our border. And it's not just Biden, it's the radical progressive Democrats as a whole. It's a war on our well-being, a war, a war on our security and safety. That young lady who was killed in Georgia last week, that is happening over and over again in Texas. A young cheerleader that was killed, found in a bathtub by somebody here illegally. A two-year-old right here in Montgomery County, Maryland, outside of D.C., who was killed by someone here illegally and released. A young person in Louisiana who was raped last week in Louisiana by somebody here illegally from Honduras, released. When are we going to stop it? When is this side of the aisle going to use the power of the purse to stop it? Because I can promise you the radical progressive Democrats want it. They want open borders. We're continuing to fund a weaponized IRS, continuing to fund a weaponized Department of Justice like the DOJ that went after Mark Houck, went after Scott Smith. We're funding an EPA electric vehicle mandate. I heard my colleague talking about energy and water. What are we going to do to preserve American energy while the American people suffer? Because our colleagues on the other side of the aisle are pursuing unicorn energy policy. EPA rules killing coal and natural gas plants. The World Health Organization, the United Nations, UNRWA, the ATF that is banning pistol braces on our Second Amendment rights, the Department of Education student loan scam, that the President of the United States went to the microphone and applauded, ignoring the United States Supreme Court. What are we going to do? Fund it. We're going to keep funding it. What about the NIH and the FDA and COVID tyranny? What about the Department of Veterans Affairs, the Chief Diversity Officers, the Abortion Travel Fund, taxpayer-funded sex change, transgender surgeries? Your tax dollars are funding all of that. And we're going to continue it with a continuing resolution to do what? Buy time to cut a deal that will do what? Spend even more money, rack up even more debt to continue these policies at war with the American people. With that, I will yield two minutes to the gentlelady from Colorado. General Colorado is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Let's call a spade a spade. The Uniparty's deal to keep spending taxpayer dollars like drunken sailors is a horrible deal for the American people. It is immoral and unsustainable to continue the reckless spending in Washington, D.C. This debt is going to our children and our children's children. And the American people elected a majority that promised to cut spending and, and cut this out of control spending from Washington, D.C. and put an end to the Biden regime's policies that are destroying America. This bill does the opposite of what we, the majority, promise the American people. Voting for this bill is voting to fund Joe Biden's wide open border policies that killed 22-year-old Lincoln Riley last Thursday. You know, crime in Venezuela sure is going down, and that's because they are all coming through our wide open borders. Criminal, illegal, aliens coming through and voting for this bill is voting to enable the cartel who have operational control of our southern border to continue the flow of fentanyl into our communities that is killing our children and our families, our loved ones. They are foreign. They are a foreign terrorist organization and they are guilty of narco-terrorism. And we need to execute our military's ability to stop them. And instead, we're funding these policies to continue. Voting for this bill is voting to continue Nancy Pelosi's spending, taxpayer-funded abortions, and Green New Deal policies. Everything we campaigned against, we won this majority on. 
and now we are going completely against it. We need to govern as we campaign and do what we promise the American people that we will do. That's why I have led to impeach Joe Biden for his dereliction of duty to secure the southern border, and now we must use the power of the purse and not fund a government that is allowing this against this people. I am voting no on this continuing resolution, and I urge you all to do the same. I yield back. Reserve this fight and pass this and avoid a government shutdown. I yield back. Thank you. Members are reminded to direct their remarks to the chair, gentlelady from Texas reserves. Gentleman from Texas is recognized. Well, uh, respecting my friend from Texas, I would say, where were my Democratic colleagues when we were passing H.R. 2, which would actually do the job of securing the border? So it is hard for me to take seriously the claims that my Democratic colleagues, all radical progressives, want to actually secure the border and don't have complete ownership of the fact that Lake and Riley was killed by a Venezuelan let out by this administration under abuse of parole, which H.R. 2 would fix. It would have fixed it. And my Democratic colleagues were nowhere to be found. This body, this side of the aisle, did their job in passing a strong border security measure. We have legislation on the floor that did the job, but we had no support from our Democratic colleagues because it would have worked. So my colleagues on the other side of the building in the Senate passed legislation in the Senate that would not do the job and now want to hide behind that. That's the actual truth. And with that, I will yield up to three minutes to my good friend from Kentucky, Mr. Massey. Gentleman from Kentucky is recognized for three minutes. I want to give the American people an overview of the debate that's happening here today. Why are there three members of Congress controlling time on the floor? I thought there were only two parties. Nope. When it comes to spending, there's the uniparty. There is only one party. So today, that is because Republicans and Democrats have united to kick the can down the road. They're, they wanted to control all time for debate today, but my colleague, Mr. Roy from Texas, came down here and used a parliamentary procedure so that the people who take their oath to the Constitution most seriously, the people who are most concerned about debt, the people who want to represent the good folks back home, have a voice here today because of my colleague, Chip Roy, who's claimed 20 minutes in opposition. And what are we doing here today? Well, we're going to pass a CR. We're going to kick the can down the road. Is that going to solve any problems? No, it creates another crisis next week. You see, that's what they want, another crisis. They want to threaten you with the shutdown so they can get more spending. But is this a clean CR? We're told you can't add anything to it. No, it deals with student aid in this CR. Do the American people, are they concerned about student aid right now? Is that the most pressing issue to address in this spending bill? We have a crisis at the southern border. We could add one sentence to this bill that would help tremendously. Just say none of the funds hereby appropriated may be used to disassemble border security erected by the states on our border. Put that one sentence in this continuing resolution. That would help tremendously. I, I am worried that we're not going to prevail today. The third group who is debating here against the uniparty. And if the other side prevails, what will happen? What will happen today, this evening, after this passes? Will we stay here and work hard for another week to get the 12 bills done, the 12 separate appropriations bills? No. Guess what we're going to do this evening? Everybody's already got their plane tickets. They're sending us home early. Congratulations. You moved the crisis down another week. Go home. Have a four-day weekend. We're going to let staff and a few members in the Senate and a few members in the House write this big bill, and then you can take it or leave it next week. Gone is any semblance of regular order from this process. What we have is what the swamp always does. And I urge my colleagues, to oppose this continuing resolution that does nothing but kick the can down the road. And I yield back to my colleague from Texas. Reserve. The gentleman from Texas reserves. The gentlelady from Texas is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I reserve the balance of my time. The gentlelady reserves. The gentleman from Texas is recognized. I yield up to two minutes, my friend from Virginia. The gentleman is recognized for two minutes. Mr. Speaker, I stand here today again opposing the status quo of more reckless spending in Washington. This House is supposedly run by Republicans, 
And yet here we are continuing to pass the Pelosi, Biden, Schumer spending levels and the policies connected to them, predictably with a majority of Democrat votes. As a matter of fact, this morning, I had a Democrat member tell me in a private conversation, he likes it when we're in charge because nothing changes, but we get the blame for it because we have the majority. Our national debt continues to skyrocket. Uh, we're at nearly $35 trillion. That's a number that's hard to grasp. It's actually more than $100,000 per citizen, and that figure just grows by the day. Biden inflation is further exacerbating the crisis, and the congressional uniparty is perpetuating it on a daily basis. Thankfully, we may be getting some future relief with the just announced resignation of the Democrat minority leader in the Senate. But some of us here in the House, we came here to actually represent the American people, to do what we said we would do. And we did not mean constantly kicking the can down the road, passing more continuing resolutions that hurt the American people. Many people in this body are scared of a government shutdown. And I will acknowledge a government shutdown is not the ideal thing, but it's not the worst thing. The worst thing is keeping in place the Biden-Pelosi-Schumer policies that are destroying the country and bankrupting our kids and our grandkids. Worse yet, they're keeping in place the border invasion, the very invasion that we campaign against, the very invasion that is the greatest threat to our country. But that's what's going to happen here today. We're going to fund that border invasion for another week as a bridge to another spending bill that will keep all the policies in place and actually increase them over the Pelosi-Schumer levels from back before we had the majority. We could have passed a, a full-year stopgap spending bill that would have cut $100 billion. We could have attached to it border security to stand up for the American people. As a bonus, that would eliminate thousands of earmarks for tens of billions of dollars more. But here we are today. True leadership involves making difficult decisions. Cutting spend is difficult. That's why nobody does it here. But when will the debt matter in this chamber beyond a campaign talking point? I urge no, and I yield back. Ch Chairman yields back. Gentleman from Texas reserves. reserves. Gentlelady from Texas is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from Texas is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I yield one minute to my friend from Alabama. The gentleman from Alabama is recognized for one minute. Prolong the out-of-control spending by the Biden and Pelosi that fuels our 17.9 percent inflation rate. This legislation provides no funding for President Trump's border wall, more than 600,000 illegal alien criminals, and 300 on the terrorist watch list have entered our open southern border under Biden, and there is no doubt that American families are in danger. Just this week in Alabama, two illegal aliens were arrested as part of a child trafficking sex ring. Last week in Georgia, a young girl with a bright future ahead of her was murdered by an illegal alien. The list of tragedies is growing, and it's past time to do something about it. I signed the Immigration Accountability Project pledge to oppose all government funding until the action is taken to secure our southern border. Instead of kicking the can down the road with another CR, the number one priority of this Congress should be funding Trump's wall and defunding this invasion. We must fund President Trump's wall and defund Biden's backdoor contributions to organizations that are sending illegals to a city near you. It should, take, it should ta not take more than one tragedy to, for a border to become priority. It is time for, to finish Trump's wall, protect Americans, and with that, Mr. Speaker, I'll yield back. Gentleman yields back. Reserve. Gentleman from Texas, reserve. Gentlelady from Texas is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I reserve the balance of my time. The gentlelady reserves. Gentleman from Texas is recognized. I yield one minute to my friend from Missouri. Gentleman is recognized for one minute. Thank you to my good friend from Texas, Mr. Roy. Well, America, here we go again. Today, the House is set to extend the bloated and inflationary spending levels that have left our country $34 trillion in debt and fuels a government that is at war with the American people. This is now the fourth time that we've kicked the can down the road since just last September. It's now the fourth time that we've shrugged our shoulders and said, sorry, America, we just don't have the fight in us this time, but we'll try again next time. We all promised that we wouldn't do this crap when we got up here. The American people have demanded responsible spending and border security for years, but we failed them. When will we heed the calls of our constituents to rein in the wasteful spending, secure the borders, and defeat the bureaucracy targeting them? You know, the last line of the Declaration of Independence has a bold and courageous statement. 
by the people who signed it. He said, they said, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. Sadly, we're not serving with those people today with the same resolve. I urge my colleagues to vote against this CR. Gentleman from Texas Reserve, gentlelady from Texas is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I reserve the balance of my time. Gentle to my colleagues on either side of the aisle, we have a fundamental responsibility under the Constitution of the United States to use the power of the purse to check an executive branch that is not following the law. It is not enough to impeach, send to the Senate, sit back and grab the popcorn and watch. We have a duty to actually defund tyranny and lawlessness. That is precisely what the founders said. It is what the founders wrote into the Federalist Papers. It is what they contemplated in Article I in the Constitution. And do not go out and have talking points about dead Americans because of what this administration is doing, letting people into this country to kill Americans like Lake and Riley last week, and then write the check that funds their broken policies. I yield back. 